Welcome. In this video, I'm going to give an overview and demo of the Amazon Guard Duty S3 protection feature. To get started, if you're not familiar, Amazon Guard Duty is a security monitoring service that analyzes and processes foundational data sources such as AWS CloudTrail management events, AWS CloudTrail event logs, VPC flow logs, and DNS logs. It also processes features such as Kubernetes audit logs, RDS login activity, S3 logs, EBS volumes, runtime monitoring, and Lambda network activity logs. It uses threat intelligence feeds such as malicious IP addresses and domains and machine learning to identify unexpected, potentially unauthorized, and malicious activity within your AWS environment. GuardDuty then provides you with actionable findings so that you can remediate this activity in your environment. Specifically, GuardDuty S3 protection enables Amazon GuardDuty to monitor, monitor object-level API operations to identify potential security risk for data within your S3 buckets. GuardDuty monitors threats against your Amazon S3 resources by analyzing AWS CloudTrail management events and CloudTrail S3 data events. These data sources monitor different kinds of activity. For example, CloudTrail management events for S3 include operations that list or configure S3 buckets, such as list buckets, delete buckets, and put bucket replication API calls. Examples for data events for S3 include object level API operations, such as get object, list object, delete object, and put object API calls. GuardDuty monitoring for CloudTrail management events is on by default for all accounts that have enabled GuardDuty and is not configurable. CloudTrail S3 data events are a configurable data source in GuardDuty. By default, S3 protection is able for new GuardDuty customers. For accounts created before the addition of S3 protection, this data source must be enabled manually. So now that we understand an overview of GuardDuty and specifically the S3 protection feature, let's jump into the console and look through a couple of S3 protection findings. All right, now that we're in the findings section, of the guard duty console I have filtered for findings specific to S3. We have a few different finding types here, policy findings, a finding associated with discovery techniques, and a finding related to stealth activities. Let's start by selecting the finding called discovery S3 anomalous behavior. This finding is associated with activity from the discovery stage of an attack wherein an unauthorized user is gaining gathering information. This finding was created using machine learning to understand what is normal for a given resource and then using that information to determine anomalous behavior. So as we go through this, you can see a description of this finding. You can see a link to investigate with detective, a way to provide feedback to the Amazon GuardDuty team on whether or not this finding was useful or not useful associated with your account. And then you can see a number of information such as overview information, the severity of the finding, the region that it was created in, the count, so how many times this finding was associated with this resource, the account ID associated with this finding. If you're using GuardDuty across your AWS organization, you might have many accounts rolling up to a delegated administrator. When this finding was created, when it was last updated, and then importantly, you can go down and see the anomalous API call that was made in this specific finding where the anomalous API call was list objects. We can see the unusual behavior at the account and user identity level and bucket level. For this finding, we had unusual behavior associated with uh, an ASN, leading us to believe that the unusual activity was the location of where this API call was made from. It's important to not only know what was unusual associated with this activity, but what is usual for this resource in this account. So if we click on the historical behavior, we can see normal ASNs, what is frequent, infrequent, and rare from an ASN perspective. We can see the same information from user agents. We can see this for usernames, user types, and then also buckets, all listed by frequency, frequent, infrequent, or rare. 
If we scroll down further in the finding details, we can see the resource information of the resource that was affected. We could see that this was associated with a resource rule as target resource type of S3 bucket, the username and user type associated with this, and then even more information about the bucket such as effective permission. We can understand whether or not this S3 bucket was public. And then if we continue to scroll down, we can see the action. Once again, this is an AWS API call. The API was list objects. We can see when it, see when it was first seen, when it was last seen, their user agent associated with making this call. And we can even see actor information, such as the caller type, IP address, and location and ASN organization associated with this actor. With this information, you'll be able to take this back and follow along with your incident response process and follow up with this security finding in this context to understand if this is something that is an indicator of compromise in your organization or if this was expected behavior associated with a user and any actions that might have been occurring uh, in this account at this time. Next, let's click on the finding stealth S3 server access logging disabled. This naming and description lets us know that server access logging was disabled on an S3 bucket in our environment, which might be an indication of an unauthorized user trying to remove visibility into specific bucket activity. So we can see a lot of the same resources here. This is a finding that's more associated with a policy change of something that might be malicious and need to be looked into. So once again, we can see overview information, the resource that was affected, instance details associated with this resource, and other information about the actor and the action that happened in this environment to give you the context needed to have an effective response to what might be malicious activity in your environment, whether that's following up with an account owner or automatically re-enabling this server access logging to ensure that there's no visibility that's missed. Keep in mind that all guard duty findings are sent to Security Hub and EventBridge so that you can create automation to collect, to collect in a solution such as Security Lake or a ticketing system or use something like AWS Lambda in this scenario to automatically re-enable server access logging if it were to be turned off. In this video, we went over a demo of the Amazon Guard Duty S3 protection feature and walked through two different findings and the details Amazon Guard Duty provides. If you're interested in learning more, please visit aws.amazon.com forward slash guard duty.